Hey guys, welcome to this week's Family Bible Study. Um, I just wanted to do a quick recap about what we talked about last week. I uh, remember last week we talked about unity and how Jesus saw unity uh, as something that was super important to what he was teaching. Uh, remember he talked about being the vine and each of us being a limb off of that vine and we talked about how Jesus called us to show love to each other and that's part of that unity. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump in. Uh, this week we are in John chapter 16. So, um, here we go. So, uh, Jesus is going to teach us another really important lesson about the way we, or about the way people treat us as Christians. So, um, uh, today Jesus is going to tell us that, uh, Christians will be kicked out of the synagogues, which, uh, for many of these Jewish believers, the synagogue is a staple of life, right? Like our church, right? So we show up to church with our families, uh, we worship God together, and that was kind of what the synagogue was for them. They had their families that would come together, uh, and sometimes that would be the only time they'd see each other in a week. Uh, so it would go pretty regularly, but this builds tension in families. Uh, if one person has been kicked out, oftentimes the rest of that family doesn't go. That's how it works now anyways, right? But uh, for them, the family would still go whether or not this person was welcome. And so they would just have to sit at home while they were at synagogue and the family was getting together. Um, but on top of that, uh, even strangers in town, they would know, hey, this guy's not welcome in the synagogue. So it's it's kind of difficult for them to really do anything. They can't make friends. They can't interact with their family that much. Um, it builds this, this rift, right? Like when your parents yelled at you and you don't want to talk to them, kind of that same way. So uh, then Jesus continues and says that the people would see killing these Christians as a service to God. And we see that in uh, the book of Acts, the way that Paul describes what he's been sent to do, right? Uh, he's commissioned by the temple in Jerusalem to find Christians in Damascus and to kill them. He was sent to do it as a service to God uh, that was supposed to be a positive for them. So then Jesus teaches that he's talking about this so that they would be aware that these things are going to happen, that these things will happen, right? Uh, he's basically saying, if I don't tell you about this and it just happens, you're going, you're going to leave. You won't stick to your faith, but I'm telling you that this option that you've chosen to follow me, to be devoted to me, is going to cause these things. There will be issues in your family. There will be issues in your relationships because of this. And so he's explaining to them that that's, you know, that's what he's, he's trying to do. He actually starts out this chapter by saying, all this I have told you so that you will not fall away. Uh, then he ends up teaching that uh, he is not able to teach everything that he wants to right now <clears throat> because of the little bit of time that he has. Like I said, we're in that last week of Jesus' life where he's kind of trying to hit the really important stuff and some of that not as important stuff he's going to let slide. Uh, he also teaches that the Holy Spirit will continue teaching once he leaves, which is really important. Uh, a lot of times when we become Christians, we think, okay, we get baptized, come out of the water and we're good but Jesus is teaching his disciples that just that one decision isn't enough there has to be a continuing process there has to continue to be work done right so then Jesus starts talking about what's going to happen uh, he says they won't see him for a while but they will see him again later and it's super confusing right he's talking about his death and his ascension to heaven uh, but he says soon the world will rejoice and they will mourn. So he's talking about his death in this right now. Uh, he's telling the, that the world would be excited about this, which we see, uh, we'll talk about it in a couple of weeks when we get to that part of the Gospel of John where Jesus dies. Um, people were happy about it. The Gospel doesn't portray it as a positive event because we're witnessing it from the view of the Christians from the view of the gospel, from the disciple John at this point. Uh, we see it in a negative light because of this. It's sad. It's all of these things, right? 
but the people are rejoicing. Uh, they're they're happy about it. They're happy that they've killed this false prophet in their minds, right? Uh, and he says the world will be excited when this happens, and that they will mourn. So, if you guys remember when we talked about um, Lazarus when he died, there was a lot of mourning going on. Jesus says this is going to happen around me as well. Uh, I'm I'm going to die, but you guys are going to mourn. But then he makes a promise to them that their grief is going to turn into joy. So he finishes off verse 33 by saying, I've told you these things so that in you, or so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world, right? And so as he promises that he's going to resurrect, uh, he finishes off by saying that there's going to be hard times. It's going to be tough sometimes, and it is. I'm only 23 years old, and I know it's tough sometimes. But he says, take heart, because I have overcome the world. Uh, he teaches that there's something that comes after, right? Jesus spent his whole time on earth teaching that something would come after, and he says that it's going to be worth it. So that's kind of what happens in this chapter. Uh, I want to talk about kind of our main lesson, uh, but give me just a second here to find it. So uh, Jesus teaches us that there's going to be hard times, that there are going to be times that we're treated poorly, there will be times that the world will treat us differently, but Jesus tells us that we have something to strive for, right? He tells us that we have a goal. So in the book of Hebrews, faith is compared to a race. I don't know if you guys like to run races or not, uh, but it's it's compared to a foot race. So uh, sometimes when you're running, though, you'll get tired or uh, you might trip or stumble or your shoe might even come untied. When I was in middle school, I ran track. I ran, uh, the, I ran a mile long race and I remember... Uh, at the end of the race, every single time that I try and speed up, right, at the end so that I could do better, uh, my legs felt like spaghetti noodles. Sometimes that happens. Uh, it also gets, I mean, it's scary when your legs feel that way because you might fall, right? So there are always things that might happen that might cause us to quit. But if it's a long race, uh, like I said, if it's a long race, you might even want to give up because you're tired or your legs feel like spaghetti. Uh, in the book of Hebrews, though, the author tells us that we can continue by the example of those who were faithful before. And so he goes through and he lists all of these people. He lists in the Old Testament people that were faithful and followed God in their lives. Uh, he goes through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, the different judges. He goes through uh, a couple of different people that, I mean, they were just amazing examples of faith, right? And he says, because of all of this, because you can see what happened in their lives, because you can see the example that they set, then you should follow it. This is essentially, it's like when you're, uh, when you're running a race and all of these people are around you, right? And they're telling you, okay, come on, you can keep going, you can keep going. It's this encouragement. So Jesus is teaching us that there's a reward to finish this race, right? Uh, and that reward is seeing him again when we see him in heaven. He's teaching us that if we remain faithful, uh, the reward is return or eternity in heaven with Jesus. And that's awesome, right? That's why most of us start our walk with Jesus, because we want to be in heaven with him. So uh, I only have one discussion question for this week. Uh, but I also didn't want to repeat one from the last week because we talked about this a little bit. Uh, so... Last week, we talked about uh, how people treat us because we're Christians. So think about some of those things that you talked about last week. Or if you didn't watch the video last week, just think about some of the times that people treated you poorly, right? Uh, and this week, I want to ask you the question, is that enough to keep you from following Jesus? Is there something that someone could do that could make you stop following Jesus? And talk about that a little bit together uh, and just encourage each other through that. So go ahead and do that. Pause this video and then I'm going to pray and I'm going to let you guys go. So 
Lord God, thank you so much for today and for the opportunity you've given us to gather together and to worship you, to learn more about you, God, and to encourage each other in uh, this race that we run. Lord, I want to pray that you would be with us. I want to pray that you would encourage us and that you would give us opportunities to share your gospel the rest of this week. It's all these things that we pray in your son's name. Amen. Have a good one, guys.